All right, this is one hour, so hopefully I can uh, cover all the slides and all the contents. We will not uh, go into deeper into this uh, TNA. This I'm just going to cover some perspective here. Uh, okay, so we move on. This lit uh, some uh, background about myself. Uh, I've been doing uh, human capital development training, uh, HR related training for about twenty five years. I've been in teaching uh, people on uh, performance management. Uh, and all the organization improvement and all that. So I'm uh, being a certified KPI professional. Lately, I work quite a lot on the KPI implementations and the consultation. Uh, I'm also a certified NLP practitioner. And the last year, I've been quite quite uh, active in uh, you know providing uh, uh, trainings, both virtually as well as face-to-face uh, -face training. So I'm quite blessed. I'm quite busy and just uh, you know sharing knowledge and all that. So just moving on. That's about a little bit about my background. And today's uh, this one hour session, uh, we will cover uh, these are a few areas that uh, we will be covering. Uh, firstly, is uh, you know some introduction, give you some context about what we're going to cover. Uh, training need analysis, uh, understanding needs uh, and challenges, exploring different perspectives. Uh, conducting effective, how do you actually going, uh, going to go about conducting effective TNA and what are the tools and uh, techniques available uh, from insights to action, you know, implementing training strategies in, and then interactive Q&A, well, hopefully we can, you know, some questions coming from the floor or some uh, comments or some, uh, you know, opinions uh, or maybe you have, can share some, uh, shed some light on a different perspective based on your experience. Yeah, Let's start off with the uh, quiz huh, just to you know, give uh, 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 tickle your intelligence a little bit. Just about five questions here. You can uh, put in your answers in the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Question number one. Just just to get the idea and uh, bring you into the you know the topic. Yeah. Uh, what is the primary objective of training needs analysis? T and A. Now A is to evaluate employee performance, to identify gaps in skills and knowledge to calculate the training budget, to determine employee satisfaction. What do you think the answer? You can just type in the, okay, Master Shafi is driving, I understand. Okay, if you, if you can type, just type in the chat box your answer. A, I'm also driving. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, if uh, you're driving. Oh, you can just say it out. You can say uh, it. So those who can type, can type. Those who can say, you can say it out. I just took the B. Uh, okay, you're right. To identify gaps in skills and knowledge. That's the main purpose, yeah. We are conduct, uh, the reason why we are conducting training need analysis. Okay, that's good. Okay, number two, which method is commonly used hmm, uh, for TNA? In TNA for gathering data. Uh, a is market analysis, B is financial auditing, C is skills audit and competency assessment, D is product quality check. My answer is C. Your answer is C. So we have a bright student in the class, man. Skills audit and competency assessment, precisely. You're right. Okay, so next one. What role does TNA play in aligning training with organizational goals? What roles does TNA play in aligning training with organization goals? Now, now A, no role at all. B is indirect role. C, direct and crucial role. D is occasional role. Does it? Does TNA has any role here? If yes, uh, question number three, maybe you can put three, no. A, three. Okay, someone put C here, the answers. So you're right. Direct and crucial role. Yes, definitely. It is, uh, we will explore uh, a bit deeper as we go. The next the future, other slides and all that. Question four, which of the following is a key indicator of effective TNA? See, every, every time when you do TNA, there's always some KPI attached to it. So what are the indicators here? A is reduced office expenses. B is higher customer satisfaction ratings. C is faster recruitment process. D, 
increase employee engagement in training. The last question, or uh, a lot B is coming in. So you're exactly you're right. Uh, this is yeah, increase employee engagement in trainings. That's a main uh, uh, indicator for the TNA. Final, why is it important to consider future trends in TNA? To focus solely on current training needs, that's A. B is to comply with legal requirements. C is to reduce the time spent on training. D is to ensure training remains relevant and forward thinking. Okay, all D coming in. Yeah, you are right. All bright students we have. So it looks like all experts in the area of training need analysis. Okay, so let's move on. So you are right, D. Okay, now let's start off with the, what is TNA. So TNA is the process of identifying. Firstly, it's identifying the skills, knowledge, and attitudes required for successful job performance and then comparing them to the current skills, knowledge, and attitudes of the employees. That means it's a comparison. You're going to compare. Uh, you need to identify first what is their skill level, their knowledge level, and the attitudes. And somehow uh, skills and knowledge, more or less you can, uh, you know, it's, it's quite easy to measure. But attitude is the hardest thing to measure. But however, it has to be done, whichever way, you've got to do that. So if you're able to measure the person's, uh, you know, KSA, eh, knowledge, knowledge, skills, and attitude, and you compare it, what that job requires, what kind of knowledge does the job requires, what kind of skill set the job requires, or what kind of uh, abilities, you know, attitudes does this job require? So you compare these two, then you will can find the gap. Once you can find, identify this gap, you know the gap exactly, then you are there. You can plan your training. So according to Don, Donald Kirkpatrick, this is how he defines uh, training need analysis. Okay, so that we have seen what is training need analysis. Why training need analysis? Especially those who are uh, newly exposed to uh, HR and this training uh, area. So here are the benefits that you get from uh, learning, understanding and implementing effective training need analysis. Okay. Right. Firstly, now I start off with the cost effectiveness. Now, you want to make sure that the trainings are cost-effective uh, because if you don't do the training need analysis, you do not know, you will not know exactly what are the trainings that, uh, you know, required for that to bridge, to reduce the gap. So, if you know that, then you can plan the, uh, uh, you know, the cost and then you can find out what kind of trainings you can give at the lowest cost. Because lowest doesn't mean it's the best, but of course, it's, uh, you know, throughout in your experience, you will learn that. So firstly, it is the cost effectiveness. You need to calculate. And second thing is enhanced succession planning. Yeah, because once you identify the gaps, those who have a larger gap, you give, you know, reduce the gap by giving the training. And in this process, you will identify who are the uh, resourceful, uh, valuable talents in your organization. So the HR uh, the manager or HR head and all that, they what they will do is they will identify these people for the future succession. For you know, they will elevate them to the next level to the senior positions. Then employee engagement. When you do the training need analysis, at least once a year, you you know you get to see the the, the employee. You talk to them. And then you will understand that what is their requirement and you enrich them. When you, you see, when you give training and you see that you value them, you know, this increases the engagement with your employees. Uh, I've come across uh, some companies, uh, two years, three years, completely they don't do any training. Sometimes very surprising when we go into the field and uh, when, when, I, when, when I talk to them and I ask them, uh, when was the last time they attended a training? Some would say it's about even... Worst case, I've seen five years, six years old girl. They never attended any training. So this is the saddest part uh, in, uh, we, uh, you know, in this uh, training industry. And we can't, there are many factors, uh, you know, uh, we can question why this kind of phenomena is still, you know, happening in Malaysia. So improved training ROI is another reason. 
The reason why you want to do training need analysis, you do not want to train the wrong person. You want to train the right person and channel the, the investment you get. You know, every dollar you spend, you get the returns. So that is the other reason why, uh, you know, training need analysis, the benefit, you know, training, improve the training ROI. And then you want to improve performance. See, uh, many organizations, they use uh, KPI to measure individual performance. So by measuring their performance, you will know that who is performing, who is not. So if, a, if an individual is now uh, every month and every uh, quarter, every half yearly, every yearly, they are behind their targets, you will know why. So if, if you find, but if when you do TNA, you find that, uh, that there is some skill set is lacking, uh, that is where the training is necessary to increase the skill set and hence reduce the, the gap between uh, you know the training uh, you know what is the, what is their current uh, status and what is expected yeah so that is improve uh, performance and adaptability yeah so that once you train them that's two they are, they become adaptable they are also ready to switch see like for example i tell you there's one organization uh, you know uh, when we bring in some software kpi implementation and this software is something new in the organization so when they use this software they have to be prepared to be adaptable, change. They must be versatile. So through the training need analysis, you will see who's adaptable and who's not. Those who are not adaptable, you wouldn't want to, you know, the, the management wouldn't want to spend time uh, wasting their time to try to, try, you know, change its behavior. So these kind of people, you should know how to, you know, get rid of them. So this, this is the adaptability of individual. Also, you can measure through this uh, training need uh, analysis. And then you can plan the targeted training. Uh, you know, if these people are from the sales department, if you, they need some closing skills, so you can plan a sales trainer who is experienced in that area. You can bring them there, and then you target that training because end of the day, it's all relate all connected to the organizational objective. So these are some of the benefits that we get through, uh, you know, actually uh, planning and executing. A good uh, training need analysis. Okay, now uh, in this in this uh, one hour, or so uh, I just want to bring your attention to the different uh, perspective of training need analysis because here we have trainers, we have uh, HR personnel, we have freelancers, uh, you know, and uh, maybe some bosses are also here, business owners and all that. So I'm just. Uh, in this next few slides, uh, I'm going to bring you, uh, uh, show you the perspective of a different perspective. That means from HR personnel, what is TNA means to the HR personnel? What is TNA means to a training manager? What is TNA means to a head of department, the strategic team, the trainer or facilitator, facilitator themselves, like my, like me, and uh, some of us are here in this, uh, you know, webinar. The participant, what it means to the participant, and what it means to the government. So these are a few perspectives I want to uh, want you to just uh, observe this, and then if there's any Q and A, we can discuss further. Now, firstly, let's start off HR personnel. We have uh, young uh, HR, uh, you know, personnel here. Now, the, these three main points I've uh, stated here. Uh, TNA actually uh, identify uh, HR people. What they need to do is you need to identify and address skills and knowledge gaps. This is the not as easy as it you know said. This is the hardest part. That's why those HR people who spend uh, many years in the uh, you know human resource, they learn people behavior and all that. They become uh, you know master at identifying uh, people's uh, you know uh, un understanding the gaps actually. So this is the number one. It takes years for you to build these uh, skills. Number two ensures alignment of training with organizational goals. Now, again, you need to know what is your organizational goal. So if your uh, company's vision is customer centricity. So lately, I was doing a, one a customer journey training for a, a pharmaceutical company. Uh, in that company, the organization, uh, the main core value is the customer centricity. So all those trainings that they plan for the year has to be directed towards meeting that goal customer centric 
So the that that goal is very important. That's why every organization has its goal. 2024, they would have come out with the organization goal. Probably increasing an example, very simple one. Increase market share by another 10%. Or increase bottom line by 20%. Or reduce, uh, you know, the waste stages by how many percent? So if reduce waste stage is their organization goal, then if you are the HR person working in this organization, your aim should be planning training to address this organization goal. Are we so far okay? Am I going too fast? If yes, please say yes. If okay, then I move on. So far, any, any, are you all okay with this? My pace. Okay, good. Mas, are you just put thumbs up? Okay, thanks, Mas. Okay, and then coordinates the TNA process and training programs. The other thing, if you're HR personnel, you need to coordinate TNA process. You need to do TNA process. But then there are challenges. So what are the challenges HR personnel face when it comes to TNA? Number one, balancing diverse training needs with organizational objectives. Now, I have a client uh, in Indonesia and uh, most of their, uh, this is actually a plantation. So this plantation manages work remotely, <coughs> which means they have estates all over Indonesia. And uh, the main HQ is in, uh, in, in Jakarta. So there's another office here in, uh, in Subang Jaya. So when I do a plan training, I have to plan uh, hybrid training, where when I uh, like this training and all the KPI training, user trainings, some of them, they, you know, those who are in Indonesia, they'll come online. And we have the hybrid training. So hybrid training is, you now we have, we have challenges. Challenges are internet connectivity, poor internet connectivity. And then often, uh, you know, the audio quality is not very good. So these are the challenges. And diverse training needs mean some people don't like online training. They want face-to-face -face training. You have 25 people. 10 plus one face to face. Another, the others, they want uh, you know online training. So you need to convince. That's why your negotiation skills, your assertive communication is very important to be able to coordinate with all these people, having them agree for one particular training so that everyone benefits. So these are the challenges as a HR person. Ensuring accurate identification of skill gaps across different roles and responsibilities. Now, another thing, the skill, actually what skills do they need? You need to talk to different uh, you know, people. Let's say you are the HR manager, you go to the head of department of, uh, let's say production. Production head says, that, hey, I, I need some training for my people. So you need to talk, what kind of skill set is he looking for? So these are some challenges. If you are a new HR person and uh, you do not have much exposure in this, uh, some you know, some you will face some difficulty, but you've got to be strong. That's why you must continue to learn. It's good that, you know, like this kind of sessions and all that, you must, you must learn. So you need to harness yourself huh, with all this knowledge. Otherwise, it's very difficult to convince the head of departments and all that. And then managing limited resources. Huh? You have some companies don't have budget, no? They don't have uh, budget. Sometimes they have budget, but they got no time. In fact, I tell you, SMEs are facing these challenges. SMEs, they have, uh, they have money in the, uh, what do you call, uh, HRDC, they are contributing to HRDC, but they are not able to plan, uh, you know, allocate a session for training. They just couldn't do it. The reason is everyone is so busy. And you as a, as a HR person, your KPI is to run maybe at least one year, don't know how many training, probably about five training or two training. So this one, when you plan this, you will have the need, but when you talk to the HR, uh, the, the relevant HODs and all that, they say, hey, sorry, I don't have much time. Huh? So these are another challenges as an HR person you face when it comes to conducting training need analysis. Okay, next. As a training manager, what are the challenges training managers uh, face? Let's see what are the challenges these people face. Now, this, the training manager's role is developing effective training programs. So not all companies got training manager. Sometimes HR manager come training manager. They also have to execute this task of a training manager. So they are, what, however, they have to plan, uh, you know, effective training programs. Effective means what? It, the training program must be not only just produce good results, 
Uh, and then this, the learning must take place. And then eventually ROI. You know, that means uh, they, uh, the participants learn and then the skills or knowledge and abilities have been increased. Uh, then only these are the effective training programs. And then prioritizes and tailors uh, training initiatives. So initiatives, you, know, you need to have one whole year, uh, different, different kind of uh, training programs, sending some of them for conferences, sending them for the, maybe you have a LMS, some larger organization have their LMS, learning management system. So you need to, uh, you know, uh, purchase some uh, courses for your people to learn online. So this, they need to find different, different, uh, you know, uh, training, learning modes. Focus on logistics and, uh, you know, logistical and uh, content related aspect of training. Because when you plan training, you need to think of logistics. Uh, lately, we just last week, we did a, a three days a team building at uh, Desaru. So a lot of logistics involved, transportation, you need to arrange the hotel, all these logistics, uh, your work of a training manager. Yeah. So these are the main, uh, uh, you know, the job of a training manager. But what are the challenges they face? Designing training programs that are universally applicable, yet sufficiently tailored to specific needs. Some trainings are very generic training, but you must make sure this one adds value to that particular individual. So that's choosing the training uh, program uh, is another uh, challenge for a training uh, manager. Keeping up to date with the latest training methods and technologies. So if you're a training manager, you also must uh, know the latest uh, learning. Eh? You need to be hands-on with the virtual learning, or maybe some of the online equipment. Uh, this All this technology, you got to keep you, you know, your, yourself upgraded. Uh, keep learning on the different learning methodologies, like LMS and all that. Also, let's say your next time your company says, okay, we're going to go on LMS. I want you to go and find the right uh, you know uh, contractor and you need to choose the kind of programs and all that and that's the training manager's job and then those are challenges actually and then you have measuring the effectiveness and roi the last training we saw i i shared a lot about roi it's not easy to measure uh, you know the training is effective or not and then after the training we conduct another assessment that's it and after that they the participants learn and they go back to their jobs are they applying what they learn or not? Who's going to see this? It's actually a training manager's job. But training managers are too busy. They don't uh, go back and measure. But good training managers must go back and see, observe whether these people are using the knowledge they learn from the training or not. Now you see, in my communication training, sometimes I give them some tools and all that, how to uh, communicate uh, effectively, like certain like negotiation, Sometime on, uh, you know, how to give feedback. But the thing is, the training manager's job to make sure they are applying. Because my job ends there after the training. Is the training manager is the one who will handle the rest. Okay, next is the head of departments. HODs, they also have challenges. Okay, their job is what? Uses, they're supposed to use the TNA prepared by the HR department and plan the training. Okay, a tool for them, team performance and productivity. They're supposed to plan. Okay, then second, they align training with departmental challenge and goals. Each department got its own challenges. The training must meet the challenges and reduce uh, you know, the gap. Advocates for specific training programs beneficial to the uh, department. So the HOD is the one who will request what kind of trainings they need. Uh, sometimes they will just guess. I've seen uh, you know, in the past, Sometimes they just guess. They no training TNA is properly done, but they just guess. They just send them for this team building, send them for some soft skill development. <clears throat> that will sometimes defeat the purpose. Huh? Okay, head of departments challenges. What is their challenges? Aligning department specific training needs with overall corporate strategy. Sometimes they forget about the corporate goals. They simply run some training not aligned with the corporate goals. Securing budget and resource, uh, they, are, they have to, you know, uh, negotiate with the top department to get the budget. Thank God we have the training, you know, levy. If there's no levy, I think many companies would not want to do trainings. Sadly, that's the truth. 
encouraging team participation and buying for training programs. Okay, so that is um, see team participation buying means the let's say production head. Sometimes when they call people for training, the train is just turned down. They say, ah, I got no time la. I'm too busy la. We've got to meet the target la. I got no time to come out of my work time to attend training. Uh, that is actually quite bad uh, because if you like you deny yourself learning new stuff that's not going to help so it's hr department sometimes need to motivate these people to attend training so hod sometimes they have challenges okay strategic team well when i say strategic team i'm talking about managing director the gm the top people and eh, the top tier and they are the strategic team what is tna for them they view TNA as integral for organizational development. So they look at the TNA, they know 2024, this is the gap that we have seen. Top management, what are the gaps? Second level, uh, maybe the operation side, what are the gaps? And then they plan the training. Aligns training with a broader business strategy because they are the top management, top, uh, you know, the, the top tier. They can, you know, the, they align this training the broader business strategy. Maybe they have a new product coming in. So they will train these people to run the new product. So these are the skill set that will be needed in the future because that's a strategic level. Focuses on succession planning. And they are the one who will focus. They look at these people, who is the one resourceful asset for the organization and then use them and elevate them to the higher level. But they also have the challenges. Huh? There are challenges ensuring TNA aligns with long-term strategic goals and uh, amidst changing uh, business landscape. Business landscape keep changing because <coughs> you're running organization is not very easy. Environment uh, keep changing. Suddenly, you, you see, uh, you see when recently we had COVID came in. When the COVID came in, completely the business landscape changed. So these are the strategic team uh, face these challenges. Balancing immediate skill with future uh, oriented skills. What is What are the future and current needs and the future needs? Sometimes they, they also, that's why they also need to keep themselves up, updated. Integrating TNA into broader talent, management and succession planning. Uh, so this is also, that's why the knowledge of the strategic team, their capability very important. Okay, this is my area as a trainer. And some of us are here, my colleagues here, as a trainer. <coughs> we also face challenges. See, I tell you my uh, just my experience. Uh, most of the time, this one happens. Uh, someone calls me and says, uh, Mr. Kanan, uh, my, uh, my company needs a training for, maybe they just tell this training, uh, a leadership training, let's say. If they say leadership training, can you give me two days course outline for a leadership training? Now, this is actually very, very difficult. The reason why. It's like going to a doctor. Doctor, I'm sick. Give me the medicine. <laughs> because we need to find out what, what, is, uh, what are their needs. What are the current pain points? So these are the challenges that we face. So, so if we need enough. We need to get enough information for me to design the the training for them. So normally what a trainer does is trainer uses uh, training uh, TNA to understand the audience's learning needs. Now, a short while ago, I asked the five questions, Q&A. The five quiz is just to assess your understanding on this topic. And I saw most of you are very good. I mean, your knowledge on TNA is there already. So from there, that's a very simple one. Otherwise, a more uh, you know detailed uh, TNA means then I need to do some assessment to understand where their needs are. So trainer facilitators, that's their role. Guides the design and delivery of engaging and training uh, what relevant training. So I my job as a trainer is to guide and design delivery, either to do this online, to do this offline, what kind of activities to you know embed in the training how to keep the training uh, you know, uh, engaging, uh, the learning that really must take place, so what kind of uh, you know, assessment I should be doing, all this the work of a 
trainer and effectively transfer knowledge and skill. Aim to effectively transfer. That means my job is to make sure I transfer the knowledge. So in this one hour session, my job is to transfer the knowledge. So that is my the reason. That's why I keep this thing engaging. So like two days training, one day training become more challenging. So these are the challenges for a trainer. Adapting training material to suit a diverse audience with varying learning uh, interests. See, uh, in learning, different people learn differently. Some people uh, auditory learner. Some people visual learner. They must see and learn. Some people, that's why many people uh, cannot learn virtu uh, virtual. They must have physical classes. So some people can learn by listening. Some people can learn by seeing. So we have that uh, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Kinesthetic people have to be hands-on, then only can learn. <clears throat> if you tell them in words, show them picture, they cannot understand. So we have this mixed audience, different uh, learning style. As a trainer, my job is to make sure I understand their way of learning and then make sure that they learn uh, during the two days or three days, the learning actually takes place. That, that's challenging. That's why only experience can, uh, those experienced trainers are able to handle that effectively. Keeping training engaging and relevant in rapidly changing work environment. Uh, I've, I've come across a situation where we go into the training room, uh, maybe 20 people sitting there, two fellows will go out uh, two hours time, and a five, another suddenly five fellows will disappear, and then another the five fellows, that means people in, out, in, out, they're actually working, so they're doing multitasking. Trainers, we, we face this kind of challenges. <clears throat> That's why during my training, normally I set the uh, house rules. In the beginning, I'll tell, if you're going to uh, you know, open your laptop, and you're going to do your work while learning, uh, it's not going to help you. So I'll strictly, I will tell them, kindly put everything down and focus 100% on the training. Otherwise, it defeat the purpose. But sometimes, most of the time, they listen now. Okay, continuously updating personal knowledge and training skills. So as a trainer, we also must continuously learn. Keep on upgrading ourselves. Like even me at this age, I still learn. I still keep upgrading myself. All the generated AI, all this knowledge, is, you can keep on learning. You need to read more. You need to read articles, journals. You need to you know, uh, network and see what's going on around. So all this knowledge is very important as a trainer. Otherwise, we will be outdated. Yeah. Okay, participants. What are the challenges participants face? Now, participants come in with the expectation. Now, when they do, when you do TNA, when you're HR person, you do TNA, it's actually it shows a pathway for them, you know, personal and professional growth. One of my things that I do is a 360 degree uh, assessment, feedback analysis. Now, 360 degree feedback analysis, not many companies do this. There are a few companies sometimes they engage me as a consultant. So when I do this, I do a report card. And every individual will be given a report card. So through the report card, they will know what are their strengths, what areas they need to work on, what are their blind spots, and what are the professional courses they should be taking to bring themselves to the next level. So this report card is very useful for them. So that is part of one way uh, that you can do TNA. Interested in training that enhances current performance and uh, prepares for uh, future roles. Now, when you do TNA, they show interest uh, to learn new things. Uh, mostly, uh, participants will be will appreciate when you do TNA, proper TNA. Values training that is directly relevant to their career development. If you give a training directly uh, that it can boost their uh, career, then they will appreciate that more. Example, uh, let's say a person is a project manager. If you give training, if you plan training on negotiation skills, they will appreciate it because they can straight away apply that skill in their job. But what are their challenges as participant? Finding time. Yeah, this is almost all the companies have this problem, finding time to participate in training because busy work schedule. And um, today we have, after COVID, we have people, some working from home, some working uh, physically, they go to office. Sometimes they go three days to office, two days at home. So we have uh, you know, a lot of uh, flexibility in the working, pay, working timing 
and uh, people working remotely. And sometimes some bigger organization, people are working across dif different time zones. And that's, again, another uh, challenge when people work in different time zones. Seeing the relevance and applicability of training to their specific job. Uh, uh, sometimes the trainee don't understand what training they actually need. Sad to say, a lot of people, uh, when I ask them what kind of training you would want to uh, take up, they got no idea. Uh, this is where the HR person need to guide them, coach them. Because when you do TNA, only then you identify what is their weakness. Their weakness, they themselves don't know. They say, I'm okay. But then when they speak, they still the English is very bad. The vocabulary level is very low. Uh, they don't realize that they need to you know, upskill themselves in, the, in terms of the language. Sometimes the computer usage. Probably they are already using Excel. Example, Excel training. Huh? Excel got many levels. Huh? Sometimes they think that they are already using Excel and they are good at it. But they might be just scratching the surface. You don't know. So only when you do TNA, they know the level of Excel. Probably it's very low. Then you send them for the uh, you know, intermediate Excel or advanced level Excel to boost their productivity. And the other thing is the motivation. Uh, staying motivated and engaged during the training process. During the training. I don't have much problem uh, to keep my participants engaged during the physical training program and let alone even a virtual training program. So far, I'm okay to handle that because I keep them engaged by various means. I know how to you know, bring them into the training. But when you uh, hire someone who don't have that skill, what happens? The participants will lose interest. They'll be doing their own stuff and all that. So this is another challenge as a participant they face. Now, what about government? Government also have uh, challenges. When they come to the TNA, what it means TNA to the government? like HRD Corp, uh, under Human Resource Ministry, what it means to them. Relates organizational TNA to broader economic and social goals. Now, because they plan bigger goals, organize the country's goals, economic goals, the social goals. Uh, now, if you, I think most of you know that companies are running this one, what you call the Madani uh, training programs and all that. So Madani training programs under Anwar government, now they introduced. The reason is to improve that. So this is actually the economic and social goals. That's the focus they have on the government side. And then focus on improving workforce skills and productivity. <clears throat> you know, Malaysia is only like less than 30. Actually, it's supposed to be, uh, we have 35% uh, skilled workforce. But we are far behind compared to Indonesia and Singapore and even Thailand. We are, we are backward. So one of the things that our country is planning all this training stuff and all that is to improve and make sure Malaysians are skilled uh, workforce and uh, they are productivity centric. The reason is this is the only way they can attract foreign investors to come in. When the foreign investor bring the money here, they will first thing they ask, what is your skilled workforce in Malaysia like? If the skilled workforce is uh, far below the, you know, the standard, then they would not want to continue. Okay, ensures alignment with national skills development initiatives and compliance with regulations. Now, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard about national uh, training index. Uh, Malaysia uh, under HRDC have come up with training index. We yeah, I'll show you next part. <clears throat> These are the challenges they are facing now. Government themselves facing challenges when it comes to TNI. Now, firstly, ensuring the organization training programs comply with national policies. So the training programs national policy must meet. So that is their first the challenge. And they are now uh, moving towards a national training index, NTI index. Now, they had, last year, they did the NTI index 0.7%. 0.7, that means uh, not 0.7%, 70%. Now. So 0 0.7. Uh, the complete one is one. That means this country, uh, it's 0 0.7 is considered very good already. Last year, they have done it. HRDC have did some kind of measurement and they found out Malaysians are quite skillful. But uh, it's, it's quite debatable though, but they have started uh, with 0.7% last year, NTI. So that's uh, government challenges. Balancing the need of industry for industry-specific skills with broader national workforce development. 
sometimes the training programs must must really satisfy must boost the skill level and again whenever government programs are launched there are always some quarter will misuse the uh, you know abuse the system yeah that's another challenge the government having providing support and resources especially to smaller businesses for effective tna and training uh, now at the moment only just lately plm uh, what program lakian madani they are my, also focusing to micro industry so micro industry which means that uh, under sme uh, sme corp uh, abbreviation uh, the uh, definition is those uh, organization below 300000 uh, turnover all considered micro and these companies also com government is helping them to upskill so that's uh, the other thing that now government focus yeah these are the challenges because they have limited funds okay so far i've covered different perspective the seven uh, you know perspective of the seven uh, uh, stakeholders how they view the training need analysis this topic is not going to cover everything about tna i'm just giving you some perspective your purpose is just to explore further you have done little bit of uh, you know uh, knowledge uh, gaining now from now onwards you're going to just go and explore and learn further yeah on okay over here how to perform so you may have a question so okay well and good how to actually carry out the training need analysis uh, okay let's here got seven steps uh, that summarizes how you can actually carry out uh, effective uh, and effective training need analysis firstly define the training objective so you need to know what what is the training objective what do you want to achieve probably three or five objectives you must have what do you want to achieve in this year 2024 uh, that is the uh, you need to discuss with your top management and come up with that training objective uh, example like what i said to increase the uh, market share by another 10% example or to reduce the cost uh, by another 10% or to increase the customer satisfaction uh, to 98% no maybe now currently only about 70% your 98% is your target so this that your objectives are huh? and then number 2 is identify stakeholders so where you going to collect data from because training need analysis you need to collect data from who you going to there's two way you can do it huh? you can either uh, what do you call uh, collect some qual quantitative data you send some forms ask everybody to just take uh, self uh, declaration of their training needs so individual they will just tick 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 there are so many forms in the internet you can just go and you know search and then customize it to suit your organization so these forms you try to get some quantitative data quantitative data means like 1 to 5 like uh, we call it likert scale uh, measurement like 1 to 5 Uh, what is your level of confidence in uh, let's say example public speaking what is the level of confidence in public speaking 1 to 5 the guy puts 1 that means is really the gap is there so you can plan you know future there's a public uh, speaking training you can put him there so there is a need for him what's the level of confidence for excel or 1 to 5 i'm 4 okay probably the gap is lesser so this is one way to get quantitative data the other thing is qualitative data qualitative you let the guy to express himself probably through interview uh, that is uh, 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 this one i'm coming to the step number 3 determine the data uh, collection method yeah number 3 yeah so how to collect data is one is quantitative one is qualitative qualitative means maybe interview also can you can call him interview the guy orally explains to you he tells you that this area is quite weak he compared to his friend who is doing much better so from there you will get some you know data some input from there to plan your training uh, need analysis complete your tna as well as plan your training calendar and then other other thing you can do at the step 3 is you can also do observation you go and see how they were carrying out the, the job so this one you need some experience if you understand the job nature you can do it through observation yeah? so once you are there number 3 step 3 already then you can move on to step 4 step 4 is to identify data collection tools what tools you want to use so like questionnaire like when i do 3 360 degree uh, let me just explain how i do 360 for for my client 
my client calls me, they will ask me, okay, Mr. Kannan, I know you're doing 360 degree, uh, you know, feedback analysis, assessment. So would you come over? So I go over, I meet the strategic team. Normally 360 have to start from the strategic team, top management, managing director, sometimes the general manager. So, or, and the HR, HR person will definitely, the HR head will be there inside. They will tell you, they'll tell me normally, okay, we have about, uh, maybe about 50 key management people. We want to do 360. Okay. So what are, I will ask them, what are the competencies that you have currently? So they will tell me what are the competencies they have. Example, competency, I'm talking about leadership skill. Uh, competencies like ability to learn new things and uh, adaptability. So these are all the some of the communication skills. These are all the uh, competencies. So once I finalize these competencies, then I come back and I will design a questionnaire that is called instrument. I need to design uh, an instrument and then I'll get the approval. They'll go through the uh, questionnaires and all that. They say, okay, good to go. Then we will distribute this questionnaire to the individuals. The individuals, if this is a small organization, I do it face to face. And I give it to them. I'll ask them to tick. And they collect all this data. And then I would also ask them some interview. I will question them. Uh, what do you think your current strength? Uh, you tell me your strength. What are the areas that you need to improve? Uh, and then I also get their information. I will, I will, when I interview, I will also ask about their, manage, their top management, their peers, their subordinates. So get all this data. Collect all the data. I come back. And I do, uh, this one is called in statistic corroboration. That means we both the qualitative and quantitative data, we analyze the data and come out with the report card. And this report card, they will keep it. The HR the directors, the HR head, they will go through this data and then they plan the training for the next two years. And then two years later, I'll go back again and do another 360. So 360 is one of the method we can do, but that costs money. Your organization, if you you can do a, something simple by giving a questionnaires to them. Okay, identify data collection tools and then create data report. So create data like my example just now. I said my 360 report is the data report. So that data report becomes very useful for the uh, management to plan the future trainings. And then analyzing data. So I explained to you, and the management will analyze the data. They will analyze, go through the data, and then they plan the training and execute the training. After you execute the training, then they will work out on the training cost and ROI analysis, because you need to work out the cost, what kind of cost you're talking about, how much training in 2024, how many trainings you're going to conduct, and what is the forecast budget for training, and then how much uh, returns can this uh, trainings can produce so all this is a big topic huh? the, uh, training cost and ROI is a topic by itself so that is the last part so the one to seven is we have seven steps here uh, this is how we actually perform training need analysis yeah TNA okay so we have come to the end of my uh, presentation i i hope you have learned a bit about this topic uh, training need analysis it's a very large topic it's not something that you can just uh, you know do it uh, in just one hour it just uh, but then you accumulate your knowledge and as you go yeah so this is this much i covered on this if you have any questions would you like to share or uh, you'd like to give some, uh, share some of your perspective, some of your experiences conducting TNA. What are the challenges in your role? Probably it will be beneficial uh, for the others. Uh, I open this uh, floor for questioning. Yes, uh, the challenge that I most of the time have is to be able to uh, get the participants. 100% focus on what is going on during the training. So if they are multitasking, so if they are actually handling their work at that point in time, it is very challenging because they are here and there. So they miss out some because uh, when we conduct training, we have a chain of uh, knowledge that we are sharing. So if there were to be any break in the chain, then it gets very uh, difficult to 
impart them with whatever they have missed at their that point and then to get them to come back to wherever we are at that point so it's really uh, something that uh, uh, is uh, something that we need to look into when they are really multitasking so that is my challenge mr kanan yeah uh, okay our challenges sir uh, for uh, continuous engagement with them uh, differ for face to face and uh, online online to engage them is a bit different skill set for i'm saying about it's much more easier if it is face to face i i, I hardly find any challenge uh, engaging them because i've been doing this kind of thing for very long and uh, i'm in my voice itself uh, i mean when i talk they really listen uh, i tell them if you really busy you can't attend this training my as well just you know leave no point no because you are depriving yourself you do one thing properly if you think your job is more important and you please do that first then you can come in once you sometimes it happens that sir so sorry sir uh, just i want to send this email very urgent my boss is waiting i say yeah by all means so they know that i'm serious from the beginning itself when it comes to the you know uh, paying attention so so far i've been okay uh, of course you can't be too harsh also sorentini uh, with your you know with your, with your staff and all that because at the end of the day they are also your customers is is uh, actually a tacit skill you know this this skill you just need to you just have to do it no other choice uh, are your challenges are online training or the physical uh, face to face training um actually it um, it's not really a challenge from my point because we do i mean i am able to get them engaged at that point but it just that that distraction is something that i'm very worried about during the training i'm very worried that if they caught the full uh, information that i'm sharing or if they missed out anything so that is the um that is the situation there but otherwise uh, to get them fully engaged i do ask questions i do talk yeah. to them when i get into the training i do know their uh, the participants by their names and i uh, get very close to them in that point in time but uh, this is my uh, difficult i don't say difficulty this is my concern right. that so yeah. uh as in online or face to face online is pretty much a little bit more difficult because we don't see their body language yeah. there <laughs> so when you don't see their body language you are not sure what they are saying is actually what they mean they are saying or not <laughs> so that's my concern is the kind of Okay, physical training. Let me let me share my uh, experience with handling this kind of uh, you know uh, maintaining engagement. Physical training, I don't have problem mainly because uh, so far I've been a good storyteller, so I am a good entertainer. So I can entertain them with stories and humor. So I play these two to keep uh, the engagement going, and they really look forward. Huh? So that's one thing is I mean I'm blessed in that sense. Online thing, yes, I agree with you. We have challenges. sometimes uh, in the beginning i'll tell all of you must it's a must mandatory the camera must be on so when your camera is on so at least i can see you i can you know i can engage with you uh, having said that at times they don't some of them they don't on the uh, turn on their camera so i can't help it at least uh, like half of them let's say you have about 30 Uh, 15 or 20 is uh, turn on the camera at least you have the engagement going so that is definitely challenging any trainers will face face that uh, challenge uh, you know online so physical one you can uh, it, my way of engaging is humor and also storytelling that's how i keep them engaged okay there's some questions here so recently i did my first tna survey it's a quanti quantitative form i did it for the hod only due to short period is it tna can be uh, opt to hod or should should be everyone in the company uh, that all depends on uh, the company culture and then uh, time frame na. so minimum is you have done to the hod hod will be able to identify the training needs in his department uh, if a limited time 
then uh, you know you let the HOD handle it. If you can handle by yourself, uh, if the if the let's say the HOD has don't know how many people you can, if you have the time and resources, then you can distribute the forms to all of them and then get enough information. You can maybe Deka would like to uh, say something about this. Deka, your your what what is happening actually? Okay, actually, it's just my three months of joining here at my new company. Okay. Okay, so due to the time span, so I just did the TNA for the HOD only. So there were like few questions arising, like why I didn't do for like everyone in the company. So that's what I want to understand. Is it this one we can offer for the HOD or it's like HR responsibility to like, you know, include everyone? But uh, if see this one, when it comes to responsibility, I wouldn't say it's hundred percent HR responsibility. HOD also plays the role of uh, human resource, although okay. his position uh, because he is cares, he cares for the people that he cares. Mm -hmm. So he should be the HOD also should uh, help out, help the uh, HR to identify the gaps because they are the one closer to the uh, the people, not you. You, okay. you, uh, so by right la, by right they should uh, help out that's why sometimes when you don't get the buy-in uh, from mm -hmm. the inside so when I talk about the HR uh, people's challenges HR HODs don't support the HR initiative uh, this one then you have a challenges but if you can um, if you if you time permits maybe you can reach out directly if the HOD is not cooperating you okay. can is it a problem for you to reach direct to the uh, employee? But I think you just can work only on the critical jobs. Maybe not all, like operator and all that, you no need to go to that level. Only to the you know critical jobs, maybe the leadership level, the team leaders, at least get some input from them. Uh, at least they will feel appreciated. That's my view. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, do, you do you think you will have time? You can use all this... Uh, uh, not necessary, you must use uh, hard copy. You can just send a uh, Google form and also can ask them to okay. just fill it up and send. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you need to create Google form? I will. A bit. Uh. Deka, you know how to do uh, you know feedback uh, using the TNA using the Google form? Uh, yes, I know. Okay, so you just send uh, through the Google form, ask them to... Uh, you can collect some uh, data from there. But it's keep keep the HOD informed of what's going on. Mm -mm. Okay. No, sometimes, sometime, uh, I mean, these are all the, you know, human being. La, you might be thinking that you're, you're overstepping. Uh, mm -hmm. Keep them informed that you're sending some, uh, you know, this Google form to get some feedback. So at least give, let get this consent la, before you do it. La. That's my suggestion. Okay, sir. Thank you. Keep the relationship, uh, you know, cordial. That's very important as HR. Be mm -hmm. nice to everybody. <laughs> you got to be nice with everyone. Okay, sir. Not it. Thank okay. you. All right. Next. Uh, oh, it's the same. Your you only said that because company have three hundred packs, including production people. So who should be? Oh, okay. So production, I think you can uh, uh, drop that idea. You can just go for the critical jobs and uh, get the data from them. Okay, <laughs> sir. Uh, the HOD competent are the HOD competent to support HR initiative? My concern. Yeah, that's a good question. Huh? A comp competent competency is very subjective. Uh, Surintini. Uh, sometimes the department head may not be competent. He might be just there, uh, chosen to uh, lead the team. He may not be competent. So if the person that is subjective, if the person is not competent as a trainer, what can you do? We can't do anything much. Uh, it is the HR uh, uh, to to support. It's the HR must go in and support. Okay. Um, normally, when it comes to TNA, normally uh, when we want to try to get a crowd uh, in a, any company, as I know, some in the manufacturing, it definitely, like you say, we just uh, have to pay attention to the leaders, to the HODs, right? Yeah. But some when we come to them and the things that we give it to them is not uh, been out to the stuff down there. This is one thing. Mm. And then if we want to do the 10 a or whatever, mm. the HOD was, uh, is nonsense. It's just the same every time that we're doing. 
it's always like that. This is the challenge when yeah. I'm big are there for the 10a previously but uh, what i know is like uh you, before to do any training like you say the kpis everything we have to do the analysis and to see what actually that needs yeah that is challenge uh what i uh, what i can say like i can share to all of you here okay the thing is um when we want to really want to do the 10a training for all the hod i just want to check with you Mr. Kanan. uh what actually that we can tell them uh, before we get the crowd. You know, how who actually must be participate with the uh, training that we want to give in to them. That's it. Okay. Uh, firstly, I think there's a two parts in your question. Firstly, you mentioned that you are having a challenge. Um, you give the TNA to the HOD, but the HOD don't pass down to the subordinates. And yes. Uh, uh, and eventually, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, the information doesn't come back to you. So that uh, hinder your TNA report, correct? Correct. Okay. So this one, uh, uh, that's why the, if the HODs are not uh, supportive, uh, sometimes the HODs are, that's why some people, they, they act like they're very, blur, very busy, but not everybody is busy. So they might be, they just don't want to support uh, you. So that in that case, uh, uh, you get the your if uh, if you are a manager uh, yourself, if, are you a manager yourself? No, no, uh, I do have my HOD, my own HOD. So you are HR, you are in the HR, right? Ah, uh, previously yes, I'm an HR. Now I'm just a freelance. So oh, okay, now you are freelance. But well, let's see. Uh, the best is get the uh, HR manager or the managing director or GM whoever involved in this thing. Uh, and then seriousness, you know, some people don't take it seriously. Uh, you send out the TNA, but then they think that, ah, yeah, this one busy like it orang, we got no time to do all this. But then they don't understand how important it is. Uh, again, it is, you have to have some deadline. You give them the form. You need to follow up. If you don't follow up, memang tak sampai. You've got to follow up. Uh, that's why it's easier to, you know, use uh, Google form and all that. So once they mm -hmm. respond, then you know how many people responded to you and uh, you can collect the data immediately. Uh, tell the HR, uh, whoever the department head, uh, look, I'm, I know I'm going to disseminate these are the uh, forms to your subordinates. Kindly uh, pass the info, ask everybody to reply. And you have to, you can kejar, no other choice. This is the people's mentality. You give something and they don't come back. Uh, that's again in a KPI. There's uh, another thing is, uh, you know, the timely uh, reporting is important. So you must report back. But then it's your responsibility. You have to follow up. Because you, it's your baby. You need to get it. If you don't follow up, they don't do it. That's the uh, issue. And then the second part, uh, not very clear. What was the second question? The second question is, uh, when we want to conduct this kind of TNA trainings, who actually the crowd that we want to catch on? Uh, who okay. Because in a company, sometimes they don't know who actually want to be in. Sometimes in a manufacturing or FMB or medical health stuff, there is various part of them that they say, oh, you have to go. I don't need to go. You have to. They, they didn't know exactly who actually they want to send for the training. Uh, that's right. Okay, let's see. Assuming, uh, Masa, let's say this company got 100 people. You have uh, distributed the TNA form to all these 100. And all of them return, uh, or let's say 80% return. 80% mm -hmm. return with the self-declaration. Uh, what are the trainings? What are their current skill set, abilities, and all that? From there, the HR manager is supposed to uh, you know, summarize this data. From here, they, the HR manager, HR head, will decide uh, based on their budget and based on their current organizational goals. Let's say the okay. organizational goals is to increase uh, the number of customers. So the more budget will be channeled to the mark sales and marketing team. Mm, correct. If let's say the uh, organization's goal is to produce more products, then more channel will be, more budget will be allocated for the uh, production. So it depends sure. on the organizational goals and their budget. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. 
Any other questions from the floor or any other sharing from the floor? If not, then uh, we can conclude, yeah? Okay, done. So I hope you all learned something, yeah? All right, and uh, enjoy working and uh, happy Thai Pusam, happy holiday and see happy. you guys in my future sessions. Okay, bye-bye. All right, okay. Thank you. Thank you for joining.